So while in quarantine, we're all finding ourselves watching a lot more television. And while doing so, I was served this incredible video by Interesting Engineering. In it, they have a very tiny floating table for like a squirrel. And I thought, squirrel's delicious. But also, if I wanted to make something like this, could we blow it up? So today, we're gonna try, let's go. So because I don't wanna jump straight into making this out of nice wood, we're gonna mock it up out of plywood based on a sketch that I made on the computadora, Spanish, and uh, make it out of pocket holes and three quarter inch Indonesian junk ply that I happen to have lying around. We're potentially gonna lose the kerf, but that's okay. If I cut here and then I cut on this side, it should be okay. Smoking peyote again, boy. My dad used to say that's my brother. So I want to lay this out on full size to like scale, because I'm an idiot. So I don't need to find angles, because I've got measurements. So 27 inches, that's leaving me what I want there. So we are gonna stick this little conundrum together using good old fashioned CA glue and pocket holes. Basically what every DIY project is. So now we're gonna drill the holes. Now what we're gonna have to figure out here is how far in our next hole goes. John, I've never seen someone template so ass backwards in my life. All right, we're gonna use these old Tammy Bessie clamps. Love these screw clamps. Great to have around. Great for standing things up when you're doing stuff like this. And not to mention the sponsor of today's build. Thank you, Bessie. Love you guys. If you guys wanna see all my Bessie gear, you got a link down below. So the concept of what is happening here is called tensegrity. And the point is to create tension within this table, counterbalancing itself. It's, it's physics and engineering and science and math and all kinds of hard stuff. But because I saw it on the internet, I'm obviously capable of doing it. Obviously the best way to do this is with 100 pound test fishing line. In order to be centered, we're picking the right spots to drill our holes. Tap in Sam. Tie knots, F***ing boy scout. Sam has studied the art of knot tying for millennia. He comes from an ancient line of knot tires. So Sam's over here tying some half hitches in order to counterbalance this, uh, the tension in the center here. So this, bling, 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 is uh, gravity is pulling against that and then these are in the opposite direction. It's compressive and some other kind of tension. But when we take those out, should float. All right, Sam, the honors are yours since you tied all the knots. It's my collapse. Collapse, schmalapse. Hope, 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 hope. Okay, okay. Hope, you gotta hold it up. He tied it backwards. All right, try again. All right, take two, more slippy knots. What we're trying to see is if any of it actually works. So hold that corner up, I'll grab this one. Ready? Nope. Slip knot in the center, still keep sliding. We gotta tie that one taut. Take three. Tighten her down. Yeah, look, no supports. That is cool. Look, so Sam's tying the last slip knot. So what we need to do then is set the center height that we want and then tie the rest of our knots. Because as you can see, she floating. It's not touching from here. See, floaty, floaty McFloater face, floaty. So it looks cool as hell. I mean, it's literally like the exact scaled model. I just don't think it looks good. It would look terrible as a piece of furniture. So I think the only option is let's step it up with walnut.
So I'm not wasting material as I plane these. We're picking our faces, our tops, and our bottoms. I'm gonna resaw them. That way I can save, like this is almost three quarters of an inch. Save that for something squirrely in the future. Because I love wood, don't waste the wood. All right, so let's do a little thinking now. This is essentially how our top's gonna look. But as we're gonna do lap joints, everything has to kind of overlay one or the other. So we'll set up one joint, mark it, and then cut everything. So this is, just pick our layout. Sex. You want that piece on top. If I can get this piece to join into it, right? That's cool. Mm -hmm. Then top. So we're gonna establish a shoulder and then I'll hog out the waist. We've got a half inch dado stack in here. Uh, this is a half lap joint. That's a dust collector. So the saw left some marks in our joinery. We're really, really close. I'm gonna clean them up with my hand tools. Cute, a little bit more refining, ready for glue up. The nice part about a lap joint on these angles is that I only have to put vertical pressure. I don't really need to, that's a lot of glue. I don't really need to band them together like if it was a something round. That, that, that probably makes absolutely no sense to anybody. But don't worry about my blabbering, just glue. Bristles and glue make you the, wanna go poo? Mm -hmm. Nope, that would be the broccoli I ate last night. And for lunch. It's not going good in here. I'm gonna use some parallel clamps on the vertical because they uh, give me a little bit more surface area. And I think that's good. But I'm literally making this up as I go, so I have no clue. The sunlight just hits it so nice. All right, so this is the template we used on the uh, mock-up for our like arm, I guess we'll call this. And I wanna do something similar, but not, and carve it. And I also wanna see if I can eliminate this leg. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do something a little longer here and bring this in and then slide it in for some, for some strength. So let's lay this out and doodle brainstorm. Doodle brainstorm! So we shrunk the size of the table down too. The existing table, the mock-up is like a 30 inch table. Router tables can be very intimidating, but it's a super versatile tool. Take your time, be safe, be cautious. Um, and if you're, if you're intimidated by it, don't worry, most of us are, but always conquer your fears. Let's go. All right, let's route the pocket. All right, so to make sure this seats properly, I'm gonna shorten this dovetail here. It's only a three inch slot we created, so we're gonna also make a three inch dovetail. This is a Japanese pull saw for those of yins that don't know. Phenomenal tool. If you want one, you can buy one. I'll link it in my description. <laughs> Hey people, Sam and I made a template. And by Sam and I, I mean I made a template and Sam and I agree that it looks decent when it's mocked up. So what we're gonna do now is cut it out of our big old chunks of wood and then I'm gonna come back and refine it on the router table. So we're getting close, we're mocked up. The feet are uh, loosely attached. I want to see what this sucker looks like, and I think I'm going to potentially mock up the, uh, the, 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 the drop floaties before I start shaping this thing. So a couple clamps, and we're going to clamp this thing in place, give her a look. So I marked these all at 30, 30, 30, so we can put the top on.
So we're looking good, everything's mocked up. I want to find a point where I can drill our holes and kind of get this thing mocked up. We think we, we think we kind of found it to where I got this mini fake plumb bob thing and we made a mark sort of off camera so that it'll hang where I want it to and land on the other foot. So we're gonna cut that hole and then redo this whole process. It's gonna be a lot of taking down, putting back, taking down, putting back, taking down, put it back, take it down, put it back, take it down, put it back, take it down. Put it back. You can see I've kind of got my plumb bob here. I'm gonna take it sort of really straight down and let it mark. All right, so we got a good game plan, I think, for what we want to do here. We're going to, for adjustability, we're gonna do a little threaded insert uh, knob thing underneath. I've got a plan for how I'm gonna run the strings. Uh, we got to cut the feet for the base now, and then we'll start shaping the arms. And then, then, then we should be able to get this thing kind of put together. Think. A lot of thinking. Too much thinking. More thinking? Less thinking. What do you think? For all of you out there that are claiming that I'm Paul Jackman, you're right, I am Paul Jackman. Let's go! Hi, Yens. That was power carving. And that's a lot of fun. You should definitely try it if you haven't. Super versatile and actually not that intimidating. Really easy to control. So from here, obviously super rough, what I'm going to do is use some hand tools um, and get this down to the half inch depth that I drew myself along here, square up these edges, and um, hope that it looks good. That's a, pretty much what I do with most of my projects. It's just pretty. <laughs> The shaping of the bottom went pretty smooth, I gotta say. Very surprised by that. So the system we've come up with is this. We're going to have our string come through a hole, and then I cut this little groove. We're gonna poke another hole for it to come down, and then we've got a bolt into a countersunk threaded insert, and then the bolt's got a hole in it so we can turn this and create tension on those sides. The center point's going to be fixed. So I gotta put one more insert in and then we'll go over to the drill press and drill these holes. We cut a hole in these bolts. And now we're gonna take our 100 pound test fishing line. And then the intent is come through the bolt like this. And then Sam's gonna tie a fancy knot because he's a freaking Boy Scout. Something we can slip, because we gotta be able to put it in and then unravel it so we can get it close. Because it should only need, once we get this thing close, it should only need a you know half a turn. And this ties on, it'll go up through the hole, up into our part. And if we need to tighten it, it'll pull through like that. So I think it's a solid option. Not the worst idea we've ever had. Now we've gotta just, do the top mount. So originally I wanted to power carve the leg, but I'm liking the way it geometrically is kind of just like, I don't know. What would you call it, Sam? A geode? No. A gem? It looks like a gem, kind of, ish. Anyway, I like that aspect. So we're just gonna put a hard chamfer on the legs. Chamfer on the legs. On the router tape. Now it's more like a bird. So now I'm gonna drill the shoulder hole for the dowel that's gonna hold the string that's gonna go through the top down into the bottom to the little recess we showed you. I'll, I'll give you a deeper, better, just hold on. Here's my idea for how we're gonna keep this stuff working. So I'm gonna poke a hole through the dowel. Then I'm also gonna drill a hole in the bottom of that dowel. So now, the string can run up, loop through, tie underneath, and I can drop it down into this hole, cut that flush, and hide where it's mounted. Got a routing bit in the router, we're gonna recess a panel for glass. Hard chamfer on the bottom.
Got the corners cleaned up. They look pretty nice. Now we got to cut a piece of glass in here. And since um, my glasses are fake and Sam's are real, he's going to go cut the piece of glass. And you're going to watch him. Bye, John. See you, buddy. Let us spray. It's very hard to have massive hands and thread tiny things. So now that I have a little room in there, I can tap tap. So before we mock up the center, we're gonna do the same thing with our top and the outside parts. So we pre-drilled these on the drill press to make sure it's all nice and aligned. And the whole reason I did this is because I wanted, I didn't want the fasteners to be visible. I'm like not dainty enough to do this. So now that we're hanging and clanging, go to your home, get in the hole. Why didn't you just go home? That's your home. Rinse and repeat. We've got everything. All the strings are run. Um, it's looking, it's looking good. It's, it's wild, it's weird. Definitely test your uh, ability to think beforehand when it comes to assembly. Um, so we're going to go ahead now and um, take the center which I've got here. So the center is where the tension is in the table. That means we have to set that permanently and then we're gonna be able to adjust everything else to kind of bring it in the level. So we're gonna clamp it up above the, th the 30 inch mark that the table is going to be at. And then when it drops down into tension, it should be pretty damn close to the height we want. Fingers crossed. So just tie it as close as you can get it. Because now we're gonna thread these through the eyelets on those bolts I showed you earlier. Sam's gonna tie some weird knot, because like I said, he's a Boy Scout. All right, so you can kind of see what Sam's up to. Mostly. I'm holding the camera like it's on a boom arm right now. You can see like the goal here is we're gonna put those through and then we'll be able to tighten them up. Now we can just take the tops off, Sam. We don't have to take the bottom. It'll just flip. Hey, it's hanging. Let's tighten it and level it. We'll put the clamps back on, flip it, and then it, we should be able to take them all off. It's so weird and awesome. Your, your foot's gonna have to go down because we're gonna... Oh! Now you can put that corner down. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, it's cool as hell. It's fucking floating. <laughs> yes, it works. No, dude, it looks so much cooler than I thought it would. Oh, it. Yes. <laughs> oh. It freaking that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's cool. For all yins that are wondering if it actually works as an end table, it is, it is decent. Book, coffee mug, cell phone, boom, it's holding. So this one turned out awesome. If you guys wanna see more crazy builds, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And after that, go and check out this insane build that I got queued up for you right here.